technology has been something that we have used for quite a number of years to really differentiate what we're doing, differentiate from our competitors, and really differentiate ourselves in the eyes of our customers. Game changers probably have several things associated with them. They're not something that people would have necessarily expected you to do. Not just different in being incrementally better, but different in the sense that our, com that our customers look at it and say, I understand why they're going to be better than the other company. We have our leading the industry in uh, characterizing and forming uh, functional prototypes uh, based on the carbon nanotube uh, technology. The carbon nanotubes, uh, they uh, offer uh, spectacular properties. They, they have uh, electrical conductivity higher than copper, uh, thermal conductivity uh, higher than diamond, and structural strength uh, 10 times that of uh, steel. Weight, 5% uh, of that of copper, but yet it's uh, stronger than copper. And so with, with that special uh, functionality, we're able to uh, have lighter weight cables and therefore uh, reduce the weight of our uh, space vehicle and as well as our uh, aircraft. That typically translates into a cost saving of anywhere between uh, forty to $200,000 a pound. Phased arrays, of course, allow you to electronically scan very quickly. Um, we're particularly interested in signal collection, so they allow you in that application to uh, collect hundreds of signals simultaneously. What we bring to the party is wide bandwidth. So traditionally, wide band arrays are, uh, have been, for printed arrays, have been like four to one kinds of bandwidth. In our case, we're working towards bandwidths of 50 to one kinds of numbers. Um, that's where these materials will take us. What makes us a leader is we have closed form equations that nobody else has that uh, provide the physical insight that has allowed us to, to guide the material development people. The concept of autonomy is how to make a good decision. Today, it turns out, we generate more data per day than the size of the internet was in 1998. So we generate one internet a day worth of data. And from that data, you want to infer what's going on around you or what's happening in the world. And then from what's happening, make a good decision based on that to affect whatever goal you might want to do. And we'd like to inf infer that on the types of machines that we're building here. We are the leaders in what is currently capable. So autopilot, automated air, automatic air, in refuel, those types of things for missions like that. That's going to keep our long range strike capability at the forefront. And I think if we can push the envelope of what our UAVs can do, then I think, well, yeah, definitely, we'll keep the lead. The exciting thing about, about nanophotonics and metamaterials is it, is it really lets you engineer the flow of, of light rather than accepting the uh, materials that, that nature has provided us with. Um, you can go out and, and really design whatever material that you need to make your, your device work. By using uh, sort of metamaterial technologies, we can really change the uh, paradigm for a lot of optical devices. So instead of having to have this big, bulky uh, light absorber to collect your light, whether it's for a sensor or photovoltaic, you can make a really thin film material. So you can, you can save money both on materials costs, and you can also use totally new materials, which might give you really enhanced electronic performance, mechanical performance. You can make flexible materials. and now by being able to engineer how the light interacts with it, you can open up all of these other uh, design paradigms to increase the efficiency. Uh, today's RF electronic modules are typically the size of a deck of cards, like this one in a metal housing. But it can be replaced by several of wafer level packaging chips like this one, slightly larger than a grain of rice. It weighs one one thousandth of an ounce, and that's a size weight reduction of over one million fold. This particular chip it's a transmit receive module that integrates three different technologies in such compact size, and it can be mounted easily on an aircraft surface. The wafer level packaging processes are all battery fabrication processes. That means you can produce a lot of these at one time with very low cost. Also, um, we are able to offer the combination of wafer level packaging with our advanced microelectronics technology, such as indium phosphide and gallium nitride, and those are the differentiating um, technology that no one else can offer.
One of the real powerful aspects of computational electromagnetics is to be able to visualize the way fields interact with structures, which is something that you can't do when you measure it in the laboratory. It enables us to see how the fields, how the currents evolve over time where they start at the antenna itself and they migrate over the entire surface of the, of the airframe. And it lets us see where hot spots may be, where the fields become more intense than others. And it lets us mitigate or change the design of the platforms if the intensity of the fields is too large in certain places. So a true powerful aspect of CEM is being able to see and visualize the way those fields behave over time. What makes it a game changer today is the developments that have happened with regard to the algorithms, the numerical algorithms that are being solved, as well as tremendous advances in computational hardware. And when you put those two pieces together, it really has turned computationally M into a game changer because now we can simulate extremely complicated systems that are direct interest to Northrop Grumman the future isn't written yet, and in fact it is in the minds of the technologist that will enable us to produce the platforms that will enable us to go forward as a nation in the future. And here at NGAS we should all be proud to be part of that heritage.